In this video, we're going to talk about some cool Linux commands. These commands are pretty interesting things that we can run from the command line, and they do all kinds of interesting things that we'll be able to share, show off and share with our friends. Now, these commands don't necessarily have a direct business purpose as far as benefiting our organization, other than keeping us entertained for a few minutes and helping us keep our sanity. The very first command we might want to talk about here is called Fortune and it allows us to see what our fortune might be. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and install that command. So just apt install fortune. Goes ahead and installs that. And then once it's installed, you simply run the command fortune and it gives us interesting commands interesting outputs for our fortune commands and kind of reading through a fortune cookie and seeing different items coming out of it now you have to be careful some of these can be offensive so you may not want to load that up on every single computer you ever possibly see however i have seen quite a few situations where that is set into the bash rc on a computer so that as soon as somebody logs in it fires up a fortune for the end user this can be somewhat scary however if you're not expecting it as i've had that happen before and the fortune said stack overflow as soon as I logged in and I was like whoa what's going on and then I stared at it for a good solid three minutes before I realized that was the fortune for the day next one to install is to look at is what's called Kause. so let's go ahead and install Kause. And I know what you're thinking, what would Kause be? And if you look fairly close, you're probably thinking that's gonna be saying things as a cow. And that's exactly what it is. You get a nice little cow with a saying there. And you can make him say whatever you want. such as the famous uh, chicken place around here, I eat more chicken. Uh, the cool thing about Kause is you can also tie this in with fortune. So you can use fortune and then the pipe command and run that straight into Kause and suddenly the cow looks like he's extremely intelligent. In fact, not only is there Kause, but there's also cow think and it makes the cow thinking things. Yay! Now, however, the cow can get a little boring, and so maybe there are more animals we want to look at. We want to hear the whole barnyard animals. And so if we do a cow say dash L, that lists out all the animals that we can play. So for instance, maybe we want to be Calvin. Cow say dash F Calvin. Uh, I like cake and then enter and there we have Calvin saying I like cake and we can have that be with all kinds of different animals one of my favorites however has to be uh, let's see sudo snap install pony say we have to install this a little bit differently but we install pony say and then once it's downloaded and installed pony say be excellent to each other and then we have a nice pretty pony telling us to be nice to each other haha <laughs> there we go this next one is to talk about how we can make a banner for our company, uh, for our web page or for our uh, client machines as they log in. Uh, and so we can go ahead and make some banners here. So let's go ahead and install those. Apt install Figlet. Figlet. Uh, toilet and sysv banner. So we'll go ahead and install a couple of different applications for us. There are just three different commands that can create three different types of banners for us. 
So for instance, if we just simply do figlet at go.com, then we got a nice looking edgo.com banner message there in text. You can put this into your init RC or your, your bash RC file so that every time somebody logs into your computer, they will see welcome to edgo.com. Uh, similarly, there is a uh, let's see, banner edgo.com and then a toilet edgo.com why they called it toilet, I'm not entirely sure. They're just slightly different. Uh, uh, the three different commands are slightly different versions of the same thing. With toilet, however, we can start changing the fonts. For instance, here I can say a font of mono 12 or mono 8. All right. There we go, mono 12. And then we can also add some filters such as a metal filter to it, which then makes it look kind of meta metallic to your environment. So there you go, banners, great times. Next interesting one, kind of interesting, is calendar. Uh, how can we find out what day it is today from the command line? And for that, we simply use the cal command. And there we can see today is the 13th of November, 2019. The cool thing is, is that this can then start showing you, for instance, calendar uh, 12 of 2019. And we can start seeing what next month is or for last month or next year or last year. The really interesting start, thing starts coming up when we start looking way, way back in the day. Uh, for instance, if we look for September in the year of 1752, our calendar starts getting a little weird. And we see that we go from day number one to two to 14. And I had to do some research here. It has to do with the resetting of the Julian and Gregorian calendars and how there was previously 365.25 days in a year. And now it's 365.246 or something like that. And the math changed so, so much that we lost several days of the month. There you go. Gotta love calendars. You gotta love people with their math. All right, so after that, we can then start talking about Pi. We all love Pi. This one, however, is the Pi that you probably hate. This is the mathematical Pi that some of us remember quite a few numbers, 3.14.3.141569. Uh, however, some of us don't remember any of them. Here we can say Pi 3, and it will give us three digits of Pi or pi 5, or pi 9, or pi 900, and then it starts just spitting out the numbers of pi for us. Isn't that amazing? It can calculate pi out for you for as many characters as you might possibly want. Next command to talk about here would be how to time things. How can we see how long things are taking to run? And for that, we use the time command. So for instance, if I wanted to do a time, uh, how long it took me to figure out 100 digits of pi, then I simply call time with pi 100. It runs pi with 100 and it shows me that it took 0.02 seconds of time in order to consume that. I can then start going to the extreme and add a couple more zeros there for my pi command and we'll see exactly how much longer it takes and we're talking 0.087 seconds so it almost took one second imagine that we can do time with other commands such as ls to see how long it takes to do a listing or ls-r to do a recursive listing and so as we are doing these commands, we might want to know exactly how long is this one command taking? Well, by using time, we can actually categorize that uh, and quantify it to be able to determine which command is faster for us to use. This is probably one of the rare times where a command in this presentation is usable in a production environment to be able to find out exactly how long these different commands you might be using take 
in order to respond back to your end users. So next, we could talk about the matrix. The matrix has us. How can we find out if the matrix has us? Well, we need to start looking at the code around us to see what's there. Uh, so let's go ahead and install C matrix. There we go. And once CMatrix is installed, we just simply run CMatrix and the matrix has us. This almost looks exactly the same way as it is on the, in the, uh, in the show. Uh, in the show, they actually used uh, kanji characters. Uh, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Japanese or Chinese characters uh, rotated backwards. In this case, you can see their actual letters, uh, English letters, Latin letters, something like that. Uh, that are being presented for us. All right, well, since we're on the way for looking at cool things on our screen, by the way, control C exits out of there, we can start talking about ASCII view. So let's start off before I do that, let's find a nice little picture for us to look at. So I'll go ahead and fire up a web browser here. And let's go ahead, uh, Linux Tux. Go ahead and look for a Linux Tux. We'll take this guy right here and let's just go ahead and save this image on the local machine under pictures. And then back at the command, lap, uh, command prompt, let's go ahead and install a view and image magic. A view is the command that we actually want to use, but it requires image magic to be able to open that picture properly. So we have to include both of them this time. Once it's installed, we call the command ASCII view. Uh, pictures and then index.jpg with driver curses and we can see right there it spits out via a command line that picture it converted the picture into letters and text for us to be able to see here and there's our pretty little penguin uh, I ended up having to save the driver's curses in order to force myself to continue to work on the command line, everything that would work both here as well as remotely. If I leave it out, what it does is it opens up a different window and shows it in an X screen, which isn't quite what I wanted. That's not quite the command line environment. So the curses shows it uh, properly. All right, well, nothing would be fun or uh, we can't continue having fun if we don't bring in a train. So let's go ahead and install SL. SL is a train for our screen. So as soon as that's loaded up, let's go ahead and call SL. And look at that. We've got a nice little locomotive, a steam locomotive rolling right across our screen. All right, and now in order coming to the pinnacle of all of these images that are happening up on our screen, now we want to see some fish. It's always relaxing seeing a nice little aquarium running in your in your window or, or somewhere nearby. Relaxing to be able to see the fish swimming back and forth. So let's go ahead and get those working on our machine. But we don't just want a picture, we want it to run through our console. For this, there are actually quite a few commands we have to run, uh, quite a few things that we have to uh, install. So it takes a few steps for this to work. So we install libcurses uh, Perl. We then go to the temp directory on the machine and we start downloading some files. Uh, HTTP whack search.cpan.org slash cpan slash authors 
slash id slash k slash kb slash kb au com slash oops term dash animation dash two dot four dot tar dot gz uh, so we download this it's a Perl extension so tar dash zxpf term animation uh, and so we've downloaded it we extract it we then go into it and sudo Perl make file make make test and then sudo make install so that installs the Perl module for us. At that point, we then have to download the actual ASCII Aquarium from robobunny.com. Hopefully I did not typo that. I need to do a no check certificate. Four oh four, all right. Robobunny.com projects ASCII. There we go. Okay, so now that I finally downloaded that, I tar it out again. CD into ASCII Aquarium. Let's go ahead and make that executable. And then run it. And there we go. We have our nice little aquarium. We've got a big old shark right there in the middle flying, swimming along and eating whatever he can find. It's pretty interesting as you watch through this we've got sea monsters we've got ducks we've got fishermen we've got all kinds of crazy things happening here and this is all via command line so this could all be run remotely oh flying dolphins flying fish something so we can have a nice happy aquarium in our environment All right, and then last but not least, we can't continue on without actually doing something that will po possibly hurt our machine. And so I'm gonna show you how to kill your system with some forks. Now in a fork in a computer realm is a definition or means something that uh, uh, splits off from something else. So similar to the fork in a road. Uh, you have one road, it forks, and then you have two roads. And the interesting thing about computers is we can fork again and again and again. And so there's a way to cause the system to fork nonstop. So it gets to some interesting code here and don't do this unless you really want to break your machine. However, it could be a interesting way to kill somebody's machine. So we start off with this funky command here that basically says, hey, go ahead and fork off. Uh, start, start a process, fork it, and then in that process, run this fork process again. And so it just forks it over and over and over. And when I hit enter, very, very quickly, we're gonna start seeing a whole bunch of error messages and it's going to make my machine entirely unusable. Oh, there we go. My cursor's not flashing anymore. Uh, pretty soon I should start seeing a whole bunch of error messages rolling across my screen. It's just that quick of just consuming all of the memory and CPU resources on the system. So there you have it. Some interesting command line tools or command line uh, commands that we can run under Linux that cause our system to do all kinds of great things. Some of them usable in a business environment, many of them not quite so much so other than being interesting and entertaining.